Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Welcome back to Work Guitars. Out here tonight in the shop, trying to get a few things done for the week. Trying to get a little ahead of things. I've been working on machining the single cutaway body. Of course, these get cut off. As you know, these are only here for machining purposes. Uh, we still have to do the neck. We have the Floyd Rose cutouts. We have the pickup cutouts. We have the holes drilled. I had a little bit of an issue though. As you know, anytime you're working on something, any kind of crafts, any kind of production, any kind of fabrication, sooner or later something's just going to not go the right way. Through no fault of your own, something just... And you're stuck. And you're like, man, that really sucks because I put a lot of work into that. And now, it's screwed up. So, that's when you stop what you're doing. And you walk into the kitchen, you pour a little Gentleman Jack in a glass, as you can see it's gone now. You take a deep breath and you say to yourself, okay, I got this. It's not a problem. I can make it work. So let me tell you what happened. I'm cutting the middle section out for the Floyd Rose. We're using this maple, as you can see, got a lot of grain in it, a lot of grain structure. You can see we've got the top carved. But this, this grain structure in this maple tends to be very brittle and very difficult to machine and very difficult to carve on because one false move and a chunk will just fall out. And so I was machining this area here, what I call the mid Floyd Rose part, and a chunk just went boop and popped out. For one reason or another, the bit reversed direction as it does sometimes when you have it in mixed directions and it just hit a piece of grain that just didn't want to be cut and it popped out so what I did and it popped out right here as you can see I've got this repair going on so what I did was I just went back into the program the drawing program and I made a separate tool path to cut out a little area very cleanly so that it wasn't a jagged little chunk. It's just now it's a nice clean little space cut out right there. Then I took that space and redrew it so that I was cutting the outside edge of that space out of a piece of wood. So I took this little piece of wood. What I like to do is I always save, I always save a piece of the wood from the top when it's getting stained or, you know, dyed, any kind of color going on it. And this is it, so that I can test the color. Make sure that it works on this piece of wood, because as you know, if you've ever stained a piece of wood for any reason, every piece of wood takes stain a different way. So you have to take that into account when you're staining something. So anyway, I took a piece of that wood that I still had left. So it's the exact piece of wood that came from the top, and I cut a little chunk out of that, and I glued it back in to that place with some wood glue and we're letting it dry and it is my hope and my belief that it's going to be such a good tight glue joint and it's such a small place that when I sand it flat and I come back in and cut that out that it will basically disappear and once we put the color on the top it'll be very difficult to notice that that little piece broke out and was repaired but I mean you can't trash a whole top like this which is a one-of-a-kind piece of art from nature I mean, you can't just throw that in the garbage because of one little piece of wood that, ch that chipped out. That's just not cool. So, as you can see, that hole didn't go deep enough. I'll come back with a drill and pop that in. It wasn't worth resetting up the machine to do. So, as you can also see, we still need to do the control cavity covers. And we'll do those. We'll cut the final profile which means that I come back, you know, when I cut these out, I always make it a sixteenth of an inch bigger than it needs to be so that I can work back down to it, get a very nice clean cut when I cut these machining ears off. And that will give us the final shape for the single cutaway body. Of course, I still have to do the net mortise. So there's still some work left to do that, and then it'll be ready for final sanding. So there's still quite a few steps to go on that particular piece. So we're doing two builds simultaneously. We got the T-style, we got this build here. 
I also have a Celine going over here. I don't know if you guys noticed in the background. You know, this one's been hanging around a while. But I mean, I got a neck, I got a body. It's just a matter of finding the time to get it done. And this girl right here is basically ready to become a guitar. I just need to do what needs to do. Oh man, this basswood is so light too. It's a very pretty guitar, that basswood is so pretty. Very clean, very pretty, very, very lightweight. Nice maple neck on it. And that's just a super clean little guitar. Very fast, slim line neck. Looking forward to getting it done. Oh, we'll get it there, we'll get it. All right, so that's where we're at. But today, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the inlay, the wolf inlay ready to put into this headstock. Okay, I've got it cut out. I'll show you that in the video. You know, I don't think you want to watch me setting up the machines and watching the machine goes around in circles. So I'm not going to do that kind of stuff. I'll save the videos for doing, putting things together and looking at final products rather than just watching boring CNC machines going. You know, I know there are a lot of people out there that do guitar videos, guitar build videos, and that type of thing. And I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here. I'm just building guitars, but I'm trying to do it the way that I do it, the best way that I can, trying to build really good quality instruments. So you may see some things done different ways by other people. But that's okay, because this is the way we do it here. So, like I was saying, I have the piece of inlay cut out, and it's soaking in the old acetone jars you've seen in past videos if you've been watching once I cut out a piece of inlay I have to take it off of the substrate because you have to glue down the material to a substrate and so that's what we're doing right now we got it soaking and acetone will release the CA glue we use CA glue to glue it down so here's our piece of abalone that we're going to use. Man, that turned out good. I'm very happy with that. And I'm gonna do a little glow in the dark eye. Put a little blue glow in the dark powder in there. You know, just for a little, uh, you know what I'm saying? A little, uh. somebody will come up to you and say, hey, is that eye glowing on that wolf? And you'll say, I don't know. Is it, is it glowing? I don't know. <laughs> That's kind of dumb. All right, all right, but that's all right. I get a little carried away sometimes, that's okay. So here we are with this. And I don't think it's ready to come off yet. I'll take a little razor blade here and see if I can slip it up underneath. And yeah, actually, uh, a few more minutes. A few more minutes on that. We're letting that acetone soak through the masonite. I glue it down to a piece of masonite. You've seen this in the past, right? Where's it at? I don't even know where it is. Masonite. Quarter inch. Or it's MDF, really, is what it is. Quarter inch MDF. And glue it down to that, and then I have to cut it off. And then we throw it into the old acetone jar, and it soaks off. All right. That's where we're at. We're waiting for this little chunk that fell out to dry. Then we can sand and remachine. Then I have to take the acetone, I mean the wolf head inlay out of the acetone, scrape the back, and then we can inlay it into the wolf. Um, inlay it into the neck, right? You're not inlaying it into a wolf. Man, it's a lot of stuff to think about, to try to talk about all at once. <laughs> but I'm getting it done, all right? Okay, so that's where we are right now. I'll be right back. We're gonna try to get this off of here. We're gonna get it inlaid in there. And this is going to be a little bit of a shorter video. The last one was way long, wasn't it? Whoo! You guys like them longer or shorter? You got to let me know, man. Because I don't know. I'm just winging it here, right? This is all off the top of the cuff. I'm not running on a script or I don't have a producer or a director telling me what to do. You know what I'm saying? You guys are the producers and directors. You tell me what you want to see, how long you want it to be. I think that's fair. You're the ones watching it. All right? I'll be right back. You guys ain't tough. Okay, we're back. Got the wolf off of the substrate, took it out of the jar. We've got it cut out, and there it is. The wolf head in abalone. And that piece of abalone worked really well for that. 
the grain just happened to be, I had to flip through a few different pieces. I buy 10 or 15 pieces at a time because not every piece is exactly like, the, you know, it doesn't have the vibe you're looking for. This one is it. I love the way I got really lucky here and I love the way that jaw, what I want to call the jaw, but this area here worked up into there like the muzzle on his face, you know? Yeah. That was a little too up close. But it will, ah. All right. So, now all we got to do is just drop that down in here. It should fit very nicely. Let's double check and see. You don't want to force it in. Usually that the only reason the only problem I have is that the points on the inlay are sharper than the points on the mortise because the bit obviously is round and then it gets down in there. It's only going to go so far down in there and it's going to come back. So I usually have to sharpen up those little areas right there. But other than that, or you can dull or round over slightly the points on the inlay, one or the other. It really just depends on which way you want to go there. And I think on this one, what I want to do is I'm just going to take and try to sharpen up. See, it's, it's, you have to be very careful. You have to be very careful about trying to make the corner sharp because it's very easy to make a cut that's too big. And it's difficult to repair that. So I think what I'm going to try to do is just round over the the wolf parts a little so that they fit down in there because they they're really super sharp i don't know let's see how it looks that part right there fits in pretty good it's pretty tight i think the right thing to do would be to and you can't push on them. You can't push on these little points. They'll snap right off. They will snap right off. So I think what I want to do is I just want to take a little bit of sharpness off. And I can do that by just taking a, a fine piece of sandpaper and dulling off those sharp points. Putting a little round over. I'm using a point zero two three bit, which is smaller than a 32nd of an inch. So it's it's pretty clean looking anyway. So we'll take some of the sharpness off these points that are on here. And hopefully it'll fit in there better. These little areas here. That's the tricky part. Getting it to fit in without breaking little pieces off. You can't just jam it down in there. It's very brittle. It will definitely break. But that fits pretty good. That fits pretty good right there. Which fits pretty good. Pretty clean looking. So I just need to watch these little areas down here. I'm going to take an exacto knife. I'm going to take an exacto knife. I'm talking. I'm up out of the frame of the camera. <clears throat> Sorry. Like I say, one of the hardest parts about doing this is finding the correct camera angles to see everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this exacto knife here and just trace around where it feels like it's kind of tight. And that little teeny blade, that little tiny blade, will show me where we're at. Like I thought it was, it's right around the sharp points. So I'm gonna try to cut those little corners out right there with this little blade. Let's see if I can get a little closer and see what I'm actually doing here. See what I'm got going on? See that little area right there? 
right there. It's a very sharp point. And it looks cool, you know, the detail to be able to keep that sharp point in there because you want to you want it to have nice sharp angles. But mother of pearl and abalone both are very brittle. You can't go forcing them into places they don't want to be. And you can't cut this too big, especially on a headstock like this out of walnut. If it's rosewood or ebony, you can feel it and you can hardly see it on a fretboard. You know, there's so much going on. The strings are there. But in a place like this, it's very difficult to hide any um, mistakes. And I don't want to force it because I've found in the past, once I get to this point, I'll be pushing down on it. It feels like it's going to fit. And then a little corner will just pop off. And that's uh, depressing. You don't want that to happen. But it looks like it's going to fit really well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a little CA glue in there. And we'll push that down in there. And that'll be fit. And we'll be good to go there. Alright. That's kind of cool looking, huh? Yeah, I like that. Alright. Alright, alright, alright. Let's take it out. Let's get a little CA in it. And put it in place. Let's make sure that corner's cleaned out. I've made the mistake of not having those little points cleaned out. And you think it's clean and then you you know it's it's very small. I should be wearing magnifying glasses because a little piece stuck in there on a little tiny, tiny point like that. We'll pop that off of there. You gotta be careful. All right, but I think we got it right. You wanna make sure it's cleaned out inside. We wanna get some uh, CA glue. We're gonna use some number two or 20. Make sure this is working. It is. Just gonna put some down in here. that. I'm going to take this, starting at the points, and work way back. Work our way back into the larger areas. And don't, you see how it almost stuck to my finger? You see how quick this stuff will stick to your finger? Don't let it stick to your finger. Push it down in there with a tool. If you use your finger, you will get stuck to it. We'll push that down in like that. And that is inlaid. Accelerator. That's a wolf anyway. That's pretty. Now we'll let that dry a little bit. When you come back, sand that all completely flush. Right? And that's done. That is done. And we're happy with that. Now what I want to do is I want to put a little bit of blue fluorescent powder down inside that eye. Can you guys see what I'm doing here? I wish I could get it more focused in on that area right there, but I can't do it. It doesn't look like I can. Let me try to get you a little bit closer. Please pardon the camera movements. There we go. How are you looking now? Yeah, we got you in there now. All right, now. This stuff right here. All right. It's blue glow-in-the-dark UV pigment. 
All right, I'm just going to take a little bit of this and put it in that eye right there, just for fun. Right? Why not? And then I'll put a little of the very thin CA glue in there. So hold on, let me grab that. Number 10. And I think I might need a new pipette on it. Nope, it'll be all right. Because you don't want a whole bunch of it to come squirting out everywhere. I'm just going to take a little bit of this. And I don't want to get it down in any of the grain or anything, so I just want a little bit. I'll just use this like a little spoon. Try to dump it down in the eye, and the eye only. I could get a hold of some of it. Not cooperating. Gotta be sloppy to get it in there because it's not cooperating. So I'm gonna put that on there like that. Scrape the excess off. So I don't want a bunch of extra glow in the dark material down in the grain of the wood. This may be a futile effort right here. Let's see if I can do it like this. All right, that's good enough. Okay. Now, I'm just going to put a little drop of this on it. Let that dry. Accelerator. to see it it's there of course it's going to take a little bit more work than just scuffing it the way we need an idea of what it looks Actually, got a little dirty sand in it. You want to see if we can see it in the dark? All right, hold on a minute. You see the eye? The eye is glowing. That's kind of cool. It's different, right? You know, one little tiny dot. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, uh, you know, it looks kind of cool. What the heck? It's got to glow in the dark eye, right? Yeah, we'll clean that up some. Hard to see it, obviously, because it's dark. It got a little bit of light shining on it there. A quick video today. I'll put a little water on here, and it'll just... Clean it up some, you can see how, how it'll look once it's got a little bit of finish on it. That tends to make it stand out some. That's got a very cool look to it. That's the Worth Wolf Silhouette. As you can tell, I kind of like wolves. And of course, we'll have the logo in silver right here, Worth Guitars. Okay, so that's it for today, guys. That light's off, that's why it looks a little dark. Hold on a second. Okay, so that's where we are today. We got that done, and it looks pretty cool. I'm digging that. The mother of pearl. Nice little bright spot there in, in the top of that headstock. 
and I really like the way that turned out. It turned out well. That's a win. Now the other thing I have to do, and I'll probably do tomorrow, is I'll come back in and work on that uh, single cutaway body some. And while I'm doing that, you know, trying to get that little piece that broke out repaired, which is always a bummer when things like that happen, but you know, it's part of doing work. It's part of being a craftsman. It's part of working with your hands. Sooner or later, something's just not going to go your way. Uh, a long time ago, an old fellow, very good friend of mine, older friend of mine said, the sign of a true craftsman is his ability to repair his mistakes or any weird stuff that just pops up in front of you, you know. That's where you got to shine. You got to get in there and you got to figure out what to do. You got to make it work. You can't just throw up your hands and quit and you know, <laughs> throw it in the trash unless it's really screwed up. And then, you know, that's a whole different thing. All right, so that's all I got today. We're going to leave this one a little shorter than usual, okay? And I hope you guys have a great week. We'll see you next week, and we'll have some more stuff going on during the week that I can film. I'll try to do a little filming along the way so you're in the loop, and you know what's happening here at Worth Guitars. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Thank you for, you know, just wanting to see what we do here. It's good. I like it. All right, thank you. We'll see you soon, man. You guys have a great week. We'll see you out there somewhere. Be good to each other, okay? Worth guitars. Bye now.